I'm not a nitpicky guy at all, but the Sony Spider-Man universe kinda gets me mad. Sony does not have the greatest track record in the superhero genre. Their most recent live action movies have ranged in quality from hot garbage to mid at best. The thing that would get me mad enough to punch my screen if I wasn't broke is the fact that they're also responsible for one of the greatest superhero movies ever. Hey, I'm James, this is Mixed Up Media, and we're going to be talking about Sony's Spider-Man universe. Why it exists, what sucks, what to expect, and how it could actually be good. Let's start by going over the rights to the Spider-Man IP Sony owns to begin with. Currently, it's live action and animated films, live action TV, and animated series with episodes over 44 minutes in length. Sony has had these rights since 1999, because Marvel was selling off the film rights to their most popular characters in the mid-90s to help recover from bankruptcy. This led to all of the superhero movies that were released in the early 2000s, and I actually have a video about this on the way, so if you're interested, make sure that you're subscribed and have notifications turned on so you know when it comes out. Anyway, because of this deal, Sony could cash in on the classic stories of one of the most popular superheroes and 900 of his associated characters. The first attempt at bringing the webhead to life, led by director Sam Raimi, starring Tobey Maguire as Peter Parker, earned almost $2.5 billion at the box office. A fourth installment starring John Malkovich as the Vulture was in development, but due to tight deadlines and creative differences between Raimi and Sony, it ended up not being made. In order to keep the rights to the GOAT, Sony had to make a movie every five or six years. In 2010, they announced that the series would be rebooted, and two years later, The Amazing Spider-Man was released. What the? Get off, man. We've seen plenty of companies try to cash in on having a shared universe of their own just like Marvel with the MCU, and Sony has been no different. Originally, they were going to kick off theirs with the Amazing Spider-Man movies. There were plans for a Sinister Six movie that was teased at the end of Amazing Spidey 2, as well as a Venom movie and other spin-offs. But this plan was thrown in the dumpster because the Amazing Spider-Man 2 underperformed in the box office, and it was also just kind of ass. After a disappointing flop, they decided to strike a deal with Marvel in February of 2015 that allowed them to use Spider-Man in the MCU. Okay, cool. But why not just flat out sell him after failing? because every single live action movie that Spider-Man has been in has earned over $700 million at the box office, even the bad ones. No matter how much some fans might want it to happen, it's most likely never going to. It would just be really dumb for Sony to sell the rights, and the films might also suffer because of a bloated release schedule, just like how a lot of Marvel movies have been recently. After finalizing their deal, Sony reworked their old plans into the current Sony Spider-Man universe, which ironically doesn't have the one thing that you would expect the Spider-Man universe to have. The only mention of the webhead that we've gotten is some graffiti calling him a murderer in three weird post credit scenes. One with a horny Venom, one with a drunk Venom, and one with a lost old guy and his emo son. So how do you lead a Spider-Man universe without Peter Parker? Well, obviously, you don't pick one of the many web-slinging heroes that you have access to, and you go with someone else entirely. We are Venom. This was actually a fun idea to start with, because people know who Venom is. Even viewers who don't read comics at least recognize Venom from the original trilogy. He's also been a hero for most of his existence, so there are some good stories to tell. But after this, you can pick a bunch of characters to go alongside him who even the most nerdy comic book readers know nothing about. Since they're focused on villains right now, we could have had characters that still haven't been explored like Scorpion whose entire plotline in the MCU was just abandoned, or legitimate versions of Rhino and the Shocker, or even Spider-Man's greatest villain of all, Big Wheel. So what the hell is Sony cooking, exactly? Based on their old plans, we can assume that they're building up to a Sinister Six movie that's going to be full of anti-heroes. This is so lame to me, in all honesty, because their approach to these movies says that they're playing it safe and sticking to a very specific formula to make as much money as possible. That's just the way businesses work, and I can't hate on it. But if this is the goal, why make movies about a bunch of characters that no one has ever heard of? The current slate of projects that they have coming up is… interesting. It's honestly like they picked some of the stuff out of a hat, but I think it has potential even with some of the more obscure titles. First up, we have Kraven the Hunter, set to release on October 6th of this year. Kraven is actually a great choice of a character to use, but his dynamic with Spider-Man is what makes him interesting. Hunting and trying to kill Spidey is basically his whole thing. He was actually the backup plan for the main villain in the third MCU Spider-Man movie if they couldn't make a deal with all the OG characters. As far as I know, he's always been a villain, unlike Venom, and even Morbius, but Sony is making him an anti-hero as well, who will probably be fighting someone with the exact same skill set as him. 
They've done this three times already, so I hope I'm wrong. El Muerto was announced last year. No, you're not supposed to know who that is because he's only appeared in two issues of Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man. The way this movie came about was because Sony liked Bad Bunny's performance in the movie Bullet Train so much that they wanted him in a higher profile role, so they let him pick one of the characters from the Spider-Man catalog. Apparently he's a big fan of wrestling, so he went with El Muerto. Now I love Bullet Train, and I even like his character The Wolf, but his performance was mostly him staring in the camera and a little bit of this. Then he just died. It's kind of obvious that Sony is just trying to cash in on his star power here, but that doesn't always work. We literally just saw it fail with Black Adam. To give a little credit though, Mr. Bunny seems passionate about this project, and El Muerto actually has an interesting story of having to build up the courage to fight a wrestling god that killed his father in front of him when he was a kid. I think this could make for a great movie, especially a low budget one that focuses on a luchador. It would be pretty sick if they committed to highlighting Mexican culture and the sport in general. Sure, the main character still has superpowers, but it could also stay very grounded and there wouldn't even be a need for CG. Surprisingly, Madam Web has an interesting premise from what I've seen. This is a rumor, so take it with a grain of salt, but apparently it's a Terminator style film in which a variation of a character named Ezekiel Sims time travels to prevent Peter Parker from ever being born and becoming Spider-Man. In comes Cassandra Webb, aka Madam Webb, whose sole purpose is protecting the web of life. Spider-Man not existing would obviously be a problem. So she and two Spider-Women, Julia Carpenter and Maddie Franklin, try to stop Ezekiel before he straight up ruins everything. Doesn't sound bad, right? It actually sounds kind of good. Yes. Well, it was written yes. by the guys that made Morbius. No, no, no. Back in December last year, Sony revealed that they were developing a movie about the character Hypno Hustler. Who? Oh. With Donald Glover signed on to star in and produce. Hypno Hustler is straight from the 70s. He's a disco musician that can hypnotize people by having them look in his cool little spinny goggles. But he also has his backup singers, the Mercy Killers, who can hypnotize people by singing. For this one, I think it would be cool if they could lean into black exploitation a little bit and make it a legitimate heist film with some over the top musical numbers. But I doubt that's going to happen because they seem so stuck on playing it safe with boring anti heroes. So what's left? The other movies that they have in development are Venom 3, Nightwatch, Jackpot, and a Spider-Woman movie that's supposed to be directed by Olivia Wilde. They're also working on three TV shows that are going to be released on Amazon. Spider-Man Noir, Silk, and then a Silver Sable and Black Cat show. Do I think that every project on this list is going to be made? Probably not. I know I said I think there's potential for some good stuff, but Morbius had the potential to be a good movie as well, and that sucked so bad that it got memed into oblivion and bombed in the theaters not once, but twice. At the end of the day, I think there's only one thing that can save the franchise. Not the MCU Spider-Man though, I know they had a deal with Marvel, but Sony just needs to leave everything over in that universe and work with what they have, and they have pretty much everything. Their Spidey doesn't even need to be Peter. It could be Ben Riley or Kane. Honestly, I'd even take Spider-Man at this point. May slapping the Goofy out of Carnage and going home to bake cookies is a movie that I would like to see. So what do you think? Are you interested in seeing any of these projects when they release? Let me know in the comments because I really do want to discuss this with you all, and I try to respond to as many as I can. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can check the description, you'll see the links down there. Thank you for watching. Peace.